from King Edward's chair, Her Majesty was slowly conducted towards the throne, a crowned queen. Duke of Edinburgh, standing a few yards away, heard the Archbishop exhort the Queen to stand firm and hold fast the state of royal and imperial dignity. Her Majesty then received the homage of the princes and peers, led by the Archbishop himself. I, Geoffrey, Archbishop of Canterbury, will be faithful and true. Faith and truth will bear unto you our sovereign lady, queen of this realm, and defender of the faith, and on your heirs and successors according to law, so help me God. The little prince saw his father pronounce the words of homage. The Duke of Norfolk, as hereditary Earl Marshal, bore the immense responsibility of organizing the coronation. After receiving the Blessed Sacrament, Her Majesty went into recess before walking in solemn and regal procession along the nave to the west door. In that most impressive procession, the bearer of the Queen's standard was Field Marshal Montgomery. Then came the procession of the Prime Ministers, among them those of India and Pakistan, New Zealand and South Africa, Canada and Australia. So Winston Churchill walked behind them. The coronation service, at which Her Majesty had indeed borne herself like a queen, was over. <laughs> <laughs> 